Hi everyone, it's Karen. So it's just me tonight by myself. But I wanted to go live and share with you a little recap on the parenting workshop that we went to this weekend because I had a lot of people asking about it because you are all so awesome and you want to know about parenting and how we can become better parents. So I hope that I can share with you um, accurate information and help you in a little bit a little bit um, of a way. So I have my notes here that I took. I guess it's backwards for you guys, but it says discipline that connects. So um, they said they have a lot of interest when they do this workshop about discipline because we all, you know, want to figure out how we can teach our children um, right from wrong and discipline them, but sometimes we have a little bit of trouble with that. So um, it started out with we got there and it was a, a husband and wife team, and they were Jim and Lynn Jackson. And they started off by doing a skit. So they first polled everyone um, what the average age of your children were. So Rylan and I really had a hard time, I guess, because the average age between Johnny and Connor. Connor is almost 12 now, and Johnny's almost 2, so there's a 10-year gap there. So if we chose the average age, it really wouldn't apply to either of them. But so um, we voted twice, and we kind of got in trouble for that. They called us out. But then they did a skit. They did two different skits, um, one for a six-year-old child and then one for, uh, I think it was like a, an 11-year-old or 12-year-old child. So for the six-year-old child, they um, acted like the wife was the six-year-old and she was drawing on a couch because we suggested drawing on furniture. Hi, Sally. I'm talking about the skit um, that they were doing at, to, to start off the, the workshop. So there was a six-year-old drawing on the couch, and one time Connor, he actually drew all over his furniture. He drew his name, Connor. He, like, tagged everything in his room in permanent marker. So this was the perfect skit for him. And the dad came in. He was looking at his cell phone. Um, which I think, you know, is hard nowadays. We're all looking at our cell phones. We're pre-engaged in something. It's hard to put things down and really, like, give our attention to our children. So, I mean, I know I'm guilty of that. So I'm sure other people are as well. So he was looking at his cell phone. He came in and he saw the kid drawing on the couch and he immediately reacted which is hard not to do. So he was like, hey, hey, what, what, are we, what are you doing? Stop it, you know, and reacted harshly to his child. So after that, they did another skit um, where he came in, he put his cell phone away before he came in. He prayed to God to give him patience and to stay calm. So when he came in, he saw the kid drawing on the couch, but he stayed calm. He went over, he talked to the child. He said, you know, I really like the art that you're doing. So he chose a positive to focus on. Um, he said, you know, you're really great at art. You're so creative now. And then he asked the child, what are the rules about drawing? And she was able to repeat to him that we're, that we're not allowed to draw on the couch. So all of these are different elements that they talked about through the, um, through the training. And so I'll go through those. But but in the, the skit, the child, then the, the father did give the child a consequence and she had to go to a timeout and think about what a good consequence would be for that action. So then they talked about um, what our goals are. Like through both of those skits, the parent had good goals. They wanted the child to learn respect for the furniture. They wanted the child to learn obedience and responsibility. And all of those qualities are great qualities that we want to teach our children. But it's about how we teach them that, which is difficult because, I mean, those are great intentions. But then the first skit where he kind of reacted to the child and was like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Stop it, was teaching the child dis that the child was being disrespectful. So that was the message that, that the child was getting that our children get a lot, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I know that we've reacted to Connor before, and I'm sure that he has gotten the message that he was being disrespectful to us, or that he's dis disobedient, or that he he's irresponsible. So he's getting all these negative messages that were like 
breaking him down, I guess. So it's kind of sad to think about. At times during the conference, I was like almost crying because I feel like, you know, we could do so much better and we want to do better. So I'm glad that we went to this conference and hopefully we'll be able to slow down and think about um, things in the moment and be able to control our reactions better. So they talked about why is there a disconnect and maybe it's the past, maybe we have resentment or maybe we have guilt. I know a lot of times we have guilt issues because Connor's not always with us, um, with the military separating us and if you have children from divorced relationships, they're, you know, you're not always with them so you want to, I don't know, you, it could just affect your reactions with them. And then also maybe the present, maybe you're just really stressed out. I know when um, I was going, when I was finishing school in my master's degree, I was really stressed. I was preoccupied, so maybe I reacted at times. Um, I wasn't as patient. Um, and then I think the one that we really resonated with currently was the future. Thinking about the future, having anxiety. A lot of times you want your children you're thinking like, oh, I want them to be respectful people. So you are worried that if you don't teach them this now, you don't like, I guess, instill it in them now, then they'll grow up and they won't be that person you want them to be. So you kind of feel anxious about that. And then um, the, lack, the last one was just lack of intentionality. So you're not really doing it on purpose. You just don't know the right way to do things. So um, then they talked about, I have my K, my mug with the K here. So they talked about the messages you do want to, to teach your children, such as, my ch such as like, you are safe with me. You want to teach them that they're loved no matter what. You want to teach them that they're called and capable and that they are responsible. And then they had this really good visual here. I guess it's backwards again. Sorry, guys. I have to fix that on the video um, next time. But the, the different tiers here with the different messages. It says here that you want to build a foundation first. So if something happens um, where the child's not doing what they're supposed to, you want to first slow down and build a foundation. And you want to teach them that they are safe with you. So that's the first and foremost. You want them to feel safe. You want them to feel loved. And then you want to connect. Um, you are loved no matter what. So there's the safe and the loved. And then after that, you will coach them. And that's where you'll teach them that they're called and they're capable. So that's where, um, I wonder if I'm not seeing the comments. Are you guys commenting and I'm just like rambling on and on? I bet so. Let me log in. Because on my phone, the comments don't always show up. So I might be boring you guys to tears. <laughs> Let me check. I'm on my computer over here. Let's see. I see a couple of comments, I think. Okay. All right, I'm not boring you. Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> okay. All right, I have the comments up here on my computer now. I think they'll show up. But so um, the third tier is you'll coach them, and that's where in the skit um, the father had asked the daughter to repeat the rules. So you actually teach them you're capable, like you know the rules, you give them a chance to repeat the rules back to you. So then if they don't know the rules, then you can um, tell them the rules at that point. And then the last tier is actually where you correct, where I think is where a lot of us, I know we do, will jump to in your reaction it's natural to just jump to correcting them. Hey, this is how you're supposed to be doing it. You're not supposed to be doing that. So, um, and that's where you teach them that you're responsible for your actions. So that's where they would have a consequence. You would teach them um, that they're responsible there in the correction. But that's the last tier. And as you can see in the visual that they gave, that's the smallest tier. So really it's more about teaching a foundation, making them feel safe, making them feel loved, making them feel um, capable and as independent as an independent person. So building them up. So the you are safe with me. Let me go into a little more detail on that. They um, talked about how we in the Bible, it does say um, in James, it says everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. So I think that's where we really need to slow down 
it, it, it actually the note my notes say that you need to slow down so actually slow your speech which maybe I need to do here because I get nervous on the video and then also you need to lower your body position so I've been trying this out with some of my students and it's really been helpful um, and then I also will try it out you know with Connor and Johnny um, as we go along Johnny's a little too young at this point I think because he really doesn't even know if he's doing something wrong he's just kind of testing things out seeing how people re will react he's so little still but um, definitely the, these tips will come in handy in the future so get low in your body position so that way you're kind of you're not intimidating in any way you're making the child feel safe and then the listen part is um, listen to God and just pray to God and listen to the child also because um, they might have something to share with you too so oh another good point that they said is that we will all fail which I think is good for us to know so that when we do fail you can get back up and try it again tomorrow. I mean, no one's perfect. We're all learn. This is a learning process, so we will fail, and it's it's a tough like learning process with your kids. So you never know how they're going to react, and so it might not work the first time. But just keep trying, and over time, you'll teach them that they are loved, they're safe, and by modeling these positive aspects and positive ways of problem solving they will model them back um, the next tier was about showing them that they are loved so that was the tier for connecting with them and in that part you want to show affection so maybe you'd offer them a hug um, touch them on the shoulder so some type of affection you want to show them maybe even just saying I love you so making them feel like they are loved and then the empathy part um, was making them feel understood. So you could ask them, or you could actually think from their perspective. Like, what is it like to be a child in the situation? So the kid was drawing on the couch. Like, what is it like for them? Like, the children and their mindsets, they are more just thinking about themselves. I mean, that's just developmentally appropriate. So they have to learn that the couch is important to people around them so they they need to be taught that so just thinking about as them what's important to them they're what's important to them was the drawing that they were making so just being respectful of that as well and then um helping them in the end so thinking about like why are they struggling i mean different kids come from different backgrounds as a teacher I can you I can think about my students and like what they're going through at home but also your children like are there things going on in your life like if there's a divorce or if they are going back and forth or if I don't know if there's anything else going on in your life what why is your child struggling maybe there's other factors in there so just um, helping them with those things so thinking about their emotion what's important to them and then um, connecting with them so after that the next tier was you are called and capable so this was where the parent asked the child to repeat back the the rules so really a lot of times the kids know the rules but they might not be following them but it's important to give them that respect and um, assume that they know the rules and have them res res repeat it back to you so um, in that part, you could find, oh, this was a really important part too, finding a positive to focus on. So when you go up to the child saying like, oh, if, so if the child's throwing a temper tantrum maybe, but they're too old to be throwing a temper tantrum, you could go up to them and say, like, I really love the way that you are expressing your feelings. So just finding like that little tiny positive. And these are all tips that teachers use all the time, but sometimes we need like a good reminder. So these things really do work, like finding a positive to focus on because you're building the child up and making them feel safe, making them feel loved, but then, so saying, I know, 
I really like the way that you are expressing your feelings, but is this the best way to express your feelings? How are you supposed to express your feelings? Should you be throwing a temper tantrum or could you do something else? So then they talked about giving the children choices. So then maybe the child could write in a journal to express their feelings if temper tantrums are your issue. Um, so just finding choices for them and teaching them the right way to show, to show certain behaviors. Um, and then solving the problem together. So thinking about how do we feel, how do we want to feel, and then what do each of us do? And also at the end, there should be consequences for certain behaviors. So um, your child needs to know that there are consequences and that you will follow through and you should be consistent. So if you're not consistent, then the child is going to think that they, that, I mean, you're not ever going to follow through. They'll know that. They will pick up on that. So you definitely should have rules and consistency, but um, just make sure that you're making them feel loved and making them feel safe throughout this whole process. Um, so then with the consequences, um, they talked about thinking about natural impact of the misbehavior. So making sure that the consequence matches the the natural impact of the behavior. So if the child was drawing on the couch, um, what would a good consequence for that be? Maybe the child would help to wash the couch and scrub up the crayon or marker off of the couch if you could even get it out at that point. Um, I don't think we ever had Connor scrub <laughs> his name off of all of his furniture. I think we, I don't even know what we did with all that furniture. I guess some of it moved with us. I think some of it stayed in that house, so. If Ryland's watching, maybe he can comment and tell us what happened with all that furniture. Um, but so yes, there definitely should be consequences and there should be rules and your children should know that you will follow through with them. But. The important part was all of that, those um, steps before that, making them feel loved, making them feel safe, and making them feel capable. And then at the end, where there are the rules and consequences, that would be the responsibility. So through all of those steps, you would be able to teach your children that they are respectful, they are obedient, they are responsible, all of those positive quality traits that you want your kids to have. Um, they had us write down a message that we would like to communicate with our child, so I wrote something to Connor, and I tried to think of positive traits that I really think that he um, embodies, and so I said, Connor, you are caring, you are passionate, you are a risk taker, you are creative, you're a thinker, you're supported, you're unique and you are helpful. So all of those things are the things that I really want to teach Connor. I don't want him to grow up thinking that he's disrespectful or he's disobedient or he's irresponsible because a lot of his actions maybe sometimes when he does those things we correct him and I think sometimes we are giving him those messages when we really don't want to. So um, I'm like tearing up thinking about him, <laughs> but I really want him to get those positive messages. I want him to grow up with confidence. I want him to um, be a strong man. So I definitely want to work on the way that we discipline him. And I want, you know, he's already almost 12, but I think with Johnny, we have a lot more time and we're starting at such a younger age, but, and so it might be easier. But Connor is such a great kid, and I want to really instill in him the passions that he does have, and I want him to just, I want to be pos more positive with him. So I thought that this training was a great training to help us with that, to take the next steps, and um, also something that kind of carried over to this training was the idea that we went to a, a marriage workshop before this at church and it was a great experience also and it taught us that you are responsible for your reactions so between our spouses like sometimes they might tick us off 
but you are responsible for the way that you react. And I think that it applies in the same way to your kids. You are responsible for the way that you react to them. So you might be having a really bad day and you might react harshly or get upset quickly, but in the end, we are responsible for the way that we react. So we need to remember to calm down, to pray to God if we need to, um, and just to really connect to them and show them that they are the they are important and um, show them they're loved and show them that they are capable and show them that they are responsible. All of those, um, the four tiers that we learned about through the parenting workshop. So I hope that I adequately shared the information that we learned. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask and I'll try to answer them. Um, I'm not an expert. I feel like I'm doing like a training where I went to a PD, a professional development at school and I'm like sharing back to <laughs> my staff. So you get really nervous when you have to do that. But I hope that I gave you the information that you're looking for. Um, if not, I know that you could probably sign up for something at your church or um, in your neighborhood, but I, I like to continue to learn and become the best parent, the best wife, the best teacher that I can be, the best LuLaRoe consultant. I'm always doing trainings with LuLaRoe as well, so um, give me some feedback. Let me know what you thought. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> And I'll see you guys tomorrow during our live sale. We're doing outfits, and Rylan will be with me then, so it should be entertaining. Okay, thanks everyone. Good night.